All right, folks, so this is the Amazfit GTS 2E. It's a budget-friendly smartwatch that comes with a lot of health and fitness features that you typically find in higher priced offerings like GPS, a heart rate sensor, lots of sport profiles, and it even comes with an SpO2 sensor. But does budget price also mean budget performance? Well, that's what we're gonna find out in today's video. So I'll come right out of the gate and say that there are some things that this watch does great, and then there's some other areas which aren't as pretty. So in today's video, I'll be going over all the features of this device, but like all my reviews, I'll be really focusing on these sports and fitness performance of this device and how it performs for GPS as well as heart rate accuracy. And I test it for running, cycling, as well as weight training, just so you can get a good idea if this device is gonna work for you. So if this video does help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below as it definitely helps the channel a lot and I appreciate it. Oh, and I also have been testing the Amazfit T-Rex Pro, which I have right here. So if you're interested in this device, make sure to subscribe to get a notification when this in-depth review drops. So as a smartwatch, the GTS2 is pretty good for the price. The AMOLED display is bright and crispy. It has lots of detail and the colors just pop. It's great to look at indoors, but outside is where things can be a bit more challenging, where if you're in direct sunlight, there can be a glare, which makes things a bit harder to see. I found that I had to pump up the brightness settings all the way for it to be usable outside. And with lower brightness settings, I couldn't really see a whole lot. To interact with this watch, it has a touch screen along with one physical button. The touch screen is very predictable, the touch sensitivity is great, and all the swipes and touches work really well. And you'll be able to receive one-way notifications from either an Android phone or an iPhone, but there currently isn't the capability to reply to either text or calls. Battery life is probably one of the best things about the GTS 2E. So with the stock settings, I was easily getting over a week out of it, most times about 10 to 11 days before I had to place it back on a charger. And that was even with recording about an hour long GPS activity per day. But that was with the stock settings. But if I turned a few things on, as well as the always on display and the brightness settings, so it was actually usable outside, I was getting more like five to seven days out of it. But still, that's really not that bad for a device with an AMOLED display. As a health and fitness tracker, it can track your steps, which I found to be just fine. It can also attempt to track your calories. It also gives what they call a PAI score, which is your personal physiological activity indicator, which is based on your heart rate and activity history. And then it can also do sleep tracking. And I found the sleep tracking to be pretty good. It provides a good amount of detail for you to look at, including breathing quality, duration, deep sleep, light sleep, REM, all that good stuff. And it also gives a summary of your sleep data over time, which I thought was organized really well. Good stuff there. And it is also supposed to be able to recognize naps that are over 20 minutes in length, but I'm not really a napper, so I didn't really test that. The GTS 2E has what Amazfit calls their BioTracker 2 PPG High Precision Optical Heart Rate Sensor, which attempts to track your heart rate and it also includes an SpO2 sensor. And we'll get into the heart rate accuracy here in just a bit when I go over the sports and fitness performance, but for the SpO2 sensor, I didn't find it to be super close to a fingertip oxygen sensor, but wrist-based SpO2 sensors aren't really medical grade devices, so I'd just say just take this figure with a grain of salt. For the actual sports and fitness tracking, the GTS 2E did an okay job at tracking total distance of activities where on this run, it was somewhat close to some other test devices, but the distance did come up a bit high. And then for cycling, I experienced the same thing where the distance tracked in the GTS 2E was just a bit higher. And then same deal here on this test. So what we need to do is take a really close look at the GPS tracks in detail to see what's going on. From a high level, things look okay, but the detail of the GPS tracks is where the GTS 2E does fall a little short. So like on these corners right here, it had a hard time keeping up with the quick turns I was making, and then it was a little slower to lock back onto the GPS signal after I exited this tunnel. And then here's a more clear example where this is a road ride where I was on some bike paths at some times that kind of meander and weave a bit and there's a lot of turns. So you can see that the GTS 2E was kind of all over the place. It was actually pretty good over here on the right hand side of the map, but on this lower portion, things started to get pretty messy. And then up top as I was headed back home, that's where things got pretty far off. So with GPS, the total distances were close-ish, but a bit farther off than I typically like to see. And when we took a look at those GPS tracks in detail, it kind of explained some of those discrepancies. So that's GPS, but how about the heart rate accuracy? And this is where things do get a bit interesting. So I'm gonna kind of go in order of more accurate to less accurate in these examples. So here's an indoor cycling session where things were pretty good. It was a little bit slow to ramp up, but no big deal there. It did have a little blip here, but again, not a big deal. And then here's another indoor ride where for the most part, I'd call this good. It did have a few spots at the beginning where it wandered a bit, but that's totally okay. But now let's get into some running. So here's that 5K run that we saw earlier. So it tracked a kind of high at the beginning and then for the middle portion of the workout, it did okay, but then it started to track low at the end. And then here's a treadmill run that had some bigger issues at the beginning, but then tracked pretty well for the remainder of the run, except for the last minute or so. 
And then moving on to some weight training, some spikes over here and over here, but strength training is a notoriously hard activity for a wrist-based heart rate sensor. And then on this session, again, it did okay on some portions of the workout, but it did have some issues at the beginning where it tracked high here, and then it tracked high here, and then it tracked really high here, and it didn't track the fallen heart rate, and it took a little bit to lock back on. So now let's take this outside for some outdoor cycling, and this is where things do get a bit weird. So what we can see here is that for the first third of the ride, it really didn't know what was going on, like it was kind of asleep or something. Then it sort of got back in line for the remainder of the ride, but most definitely not what I would call amazing, plus some pretty big dropouts at the end. So when I see results like that, I don't just call it bad and call it a day. What I do is I test it again and again, just to see if maybe I was even doing something wrong, just to see again if there is some consistency with some of those results. But on this ride, we see nearly the exact same thing at the beginning of the ride where it was tracking really low, but then it really took a turn on the last half of the ride. And then on this ride, again, it dropped out for the last half of the ride. So at this point, I was like, okay, so this is consistent behavior that's coming out of the watch, but what I do before I film the review like this, especially in a situation where I'm getting not so great results, is I just go ahead and test it a couple more times just to make sure that the information I'm putting out is going to be accurate. So this is a ride that was just two days ago and we can see basically the exact same thing. But I had a theory, maybe it was just the outdoor cycling profile that was producing some weird results. So yesterday I did a boatload of testing just to see if that was the case. So first things first, just to get a baseline, I did an indoor cycling session where as we saw from the previous examples, I actually got some okay results. For the majority of the ride, it was decent, but you can see at the beginning where it took a bit to lock on, then it had some drops here and here, and then it had a small spike at the end. But what we can see is that there are portions where it tracked okay. And then I immediately went outside for a quick ride. So 16 minutes into my ride, I'm seeing this, which is pretty far off. And then a few minutes later, pretty much the same story. So what I did at this point was I stopped and saved that outdoor cycling session, and I actually switched it over to the indoor cycling workout profile just to see if that would get more accurate results. Again, I hung out until the watch's heart rate matched the heart rate being collected on a chest heart rate strap, and then I got rolling. But unfortunately, no love there. And here's the heart rate data in detail where the first half is using the outdoor cycling profile and the second half is using the indoor cycling profile. So just to beat a dead horse here, I also did a treadmill run that same night just to see if things would be different for running. So I don't think it has anything to do specifically with that outdoor cycling profile just because when I was using the indoor cycling profile outside, it was still producing those same weird results. So you may be asking, well, maybe this is just a one-off faulty device. Well, I don't necessarily think so just because at times it was tracking somewhat okay. And the other reason I don't think it's a one-off faulty device is that I've actually been experiencing some of the same issues with the T-Rex Pro, which uses the exact same heart rate sensor. So if you made it this far into the video, you kind of got a glimpse into the T-Rex Pro in-depth review. So when it comes to this device, I think it truly is a case of you get what you pay for. As a smartwatch, at the price, I think it's a pretty good value, but for the sports and fitness performance, that's where things get a little bit weaker. So the GPS performance, it wasn't stellar, but I think it's probably usable for some folks out there, as long as you're not looking for that fine detail, but the heart rate performance is definitely its weak point. Anyhow, if you found the information in this video useful, it would be oh so awesome if you hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel to get a notification for the in-depth review of the T-Rex Pro, which is coming up pretty soon. In the meantime, have fun out there and we will see you in the next video.